Everybody has their own style of bonding emotionally with the people in their lives. This is called attachment style, and it plays a central role in the healthiness of our relationships. Neuropsychologist Dr. Judy Ho is an expert in attachment theory, and in this series, she explains the types of attachment styles, where each one comes from, and how to recognize your own. Most importantly, she shares how to improve it in order to improve your relationships and enhance your mental wellness. Dr. Judy, I'm so glad that you get to talk to our audience about this topic because it's the most requested topic I think we've had in the last year probably. So cool. So let's talk about attachment theory. Where All does right. it come from? I am so excited about attachment theory because it does affect so many elements of your life even mm -hmm. as adults. But attachment theory is all about the fact that as infants and as very young children, we are helpless. So we need our caregivers to take care of us. So attachment theory is all about how we establish that relationship with our primary caregivers and whether or not that establishment is healthy or not and how that influences how you function as a child both mentally and physically and again pervades into your adulthood and career in love in friendships and every other aspect of your life do we know that it is affecting us or is it affecting us subconsciously? I think sometimes you don't realize it. Okay. And I think unless you hear the word attachment or you've understood the term attachment or had been spoken um, about it to somebody in some way, you're not gonna really know that that's attachment, but mm -hmm. it will explain so many of your decisions in life. It explains why you're attracted to the people that you are. It sometimes even explains the type of work you do, and it explains the kind of friends you like to keep. So yeah. it really does affect so many areas of your life, which is why I think your viewers have requested it so much. I hope you're finding value in this session, and if you are, I invite you to visit medcircle.com or just use the links below this video. There you'll learn about what is included in a MedCircle membership. We are more than just a YouTube channel. With a MedCircle membership, you'll have access to a video library of more than 900 titles. You'll also be able to attend weekly live workshops led by the same doctors that you're watching in this session and in other videos on YouTube. And you have the opportunity to ask those doctors your questions. You don't have to do this alone. MedCircle is your perfect mental health care companion. Visit medcircle.com and we'll see you there. I talked to Ginger Z. She's the chief meteorologist at Good Morning America. And in her book, she mentioned that part of the reason she wanted to get into weather and become a scientist and be on television was to get this approval from her parents mm -hmm. because they always grew up watching the Weather Channel or watching mm -hmm. the weather on TV. And she goes, well, if I'm on TV, then they will sit and watch me and I can add benefit to their life. And she goes, so here I am, yeah. I learned in therapy, I built an entire huge career based on this deep, deep uh, want to uh, uh, get my parents' mm -hmm. approval. Right, yeah. yeah, it totally makes sense. And she has really good insight about that. Yeah. And I was gonna say too, that people who've been to therapy generally know the term attachment because probably at some point your therapist has mentioned it to you. Uh, mentioned attachment or just asked about your parents? Well, I think, well, both, you yeah. know, but I think most therapists will have mentioned attachment at some point. And it's so interesting that even the attachment relationship that you have with your therapist can really influence how well you do in the therapeutic process. Now. It seems obvious to some, but why is this so critical to understand attachment theory? I think it's really critical because it really talks about your template for building relationships with people, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Because the relationship that a baby builds with its primary caregiver mm -hmm. is literally the most important relationship at that time. Mm -hmm. And then over time, you still use that template. Even if as adults, you're no longer the helpless baby, you still use the same template over and over because our human brains are so much better at a process called assimilation, which is whenever there's new information that comes in, you still absorb it into your existing schema or mm -hmm. your existing worldview. Mm -hmm. And that gets established from your very first important relationship. When you are fully educated on attachment theory, how will it impact the different areas of your life? Well, first is you're gonna have much more awareness about the things that you do and why you do them, and especially helpful when you're trying to change any unhelpful behaviors. Mm. People have come to me telling me that they keep having these unfulfilled relationships, and they keep having the same relationship over and over again. And once you understand that it might be linked to your attachment, that's step number one before you can make that positive change. Yeah. So once you know that, you can actually start challenging any unhelpful attachment 
beliefs yeah. so that you can have better relationships and so that you can move on and achieve the goals that you want. I mean, a lot of people, because of their attachment issues, are afraid to just interact with life in general. So sometimes mm -hmm. they hold themselves back even in careers and they just end up having more of an unfulfilled existence overall or even a tumultuous existence, as we'll talk about in, later in the series. We're going to go into all of the different types of attachment styles, but right now, can you just give a high level overview on the different types that are out there? Absolutely. So so the types were first categorized by Mary Ainsworth, and this comes from John Bowlby's work in attachment, which started in the 1950s. Mary Ainsworth came later, around the 70s, and developed this strange situation where they observed babies and their parents and kind of developed these different ways to categorize the attachments. Now, the best kind of attachment is what's called secure attachment. When Mary Ainsworth did her study, she thought that two thirds of people would have this attachment. Honestly, I think as further research has come, it's probably not true. I think it's actually more the minority than the majority. But aside from that, there's three other types of insecure attachment. And the first type is anxious preoccupied. So these are people who tend to be more clingy. Um, they, they have a lot of needs that feel unaddressed and they mm -hmm. oftentimes will even have fantasy beliefs about what a relationship will do for their life. And I think I dated that person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel like we all did. Um, I know people are like, hmm, which ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend is this <laughs> right. one? Um, and then we have the dismissive avoidant attached individuals who as adults tend to be much more independent, they tell themselves they don't really need relationships mm. and they tend to kind of escape situations where people want to express strong emotions. It makes them very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> and then finally, um, we have the fearful avoidant type. And this type is sort of a combination of the two types we just talked about that are insecure and they kind of go back and forth. So on the one hand, they really have this very conscious need to have deep relationships. But on the other hand, they're so afraid of abandonment mm. that their behaviors are actually very erratic. So mm -hmm. sometimes they act kind of clingy, other times they run away and you can't kind of can't predict them. And then, of course, going back to the securely attached, the whole idea is that these guys are able to be flexible in every relationship. They treat each relationship as it is, and they have flexible problem solving as opposed to this one-way approach to try to get their needs met. But as I mentioned, I think it's a lot less common than was originally thought. Can people have a mixed bag of attachment styles? I think so, and I think when you also break down attachment into the different domains of life, sometimes you can have a mixed bag, meaning okay. that some people actually look kind of securely attached in their career. But right, right. when it comes to intimate relationships, that's where their true attachment, their ah. deepest fears get realized. Yes. Because again, when it's something like a career, um, there's something that you're doing for that career. Like There's a job that you're doing, there's a performance aspect. And people who have insecure attachments can sometimes be secure in that domain because it still equates to them doing something. Yes, and so then when they earn respect or care or nurturance through that, they feel like they've earned it. They worked hard towards it. But with an intimate relationship, it's so much more difficult because it's kind of like, are you a lovable person yeah. at all? Yeah. Even if you do nothing. And that's where people's de deepest fears lie, is yes. their intimate relationships because there's no place to hide. We'll be back with our discussion in just a little bit, but I wanted to remind you that Med Circle is not just a YouTube channel. In fact, the Med Circle membership, which is available in both monthly and annual memberships, can give you access to a variety of our doctors where you have the ability to ask them questions and get answers. Visit medcircle.com or use the links below. Now, let's go back to the discussion. So attachment styles aren't a diagnosable condition, but certainly they can influence a person's behavior later in life. And you mentioned in one of these attachment styles, a fear of abandonment, yeah. which I know is one of the big symptoms for someone who has borderline personality yes. disorder. So explain how understanding attachment styles can help people navigate the mental health, uh, you know, complications that exist out there. Yeah, it's a really good point that you bring up because basically, as I see it, attachment styles is one way to explain the etiology or causes of your mental health symptoms. Mm. So somebody who has borderline personality traits or the actual disorder, it's very likely that they have a fearful avoidant attachment style. And that is one of the major causes that leads them to express that through right. the borderline symptoms. Somebody who has an anxious preoccupied style, there's a lot of research that shows that that leads to anxiety disorders. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Right. And people who have the dismissive avoidant type, sometimes they become more narcissistic in nature. They become even maybe antisocial in nature when we talk about the personality spectrum. Uh -huh. um, 
sometimes they have a difficulty putting themselves in other people's shoes, so they have sort of like a lower empathy that's associated with a number of different types of clinical conditions. And so, for sure, I think that it's really about understanding the causation yeah. and the factors that lead you to your mental health symptoms. Excellent. Well, we're going to start this conversation in our next session talking about the secure attachment style.